Just gonna peel this off one section at a time. Chad will get that going. Peel one section, glue one section. Well, we gotta do that about six more times. There it is. So let's do the other side and start doing good stuff. When it comes to the rest of the roof, I'll be honest, I find it to be very relaxing to come. Oh, and just so you guys know, I do use the scrap to cover up the holes on the inside, so I'm not spraying glue on uh, the inside of these uh, RVs. I mean, I'm making a mess to be sure, but that can be cleaned up. The glue, not so much. All right, so I'm just, uh, uh stuff in my eyes. Drill my holes right here so I can connect the dots on the inside or on the roof and uh, whew, cut it out. So, next time you'll see me on the roof, I guess. Got sweat in my eyes. So, we got a bunch of holes in the roof here. Some might call it a holy roof. I'll just call it the next step in the process. And I'll connect all the dots, cut all this out, then I can start putting components down. I'll get this put down and. and Still a little treading on that front cap area. All right, so I just have the skylight to cut out. Everything else is cut out here. We're doing really great. No refrigerator vents in this one, so that's nice. <clears throat> All right, I just made some uh, aluminum little tabs right here out of uh, geez, this is about damn near eighth inch aluminum. We'll be using this for the filter housing for the roof AC. And then I'll be using this method for something similar on that front cap. Important hammer. So, again, you guys have seen the cross section of this roof now. You know that it's just eighth inch uh, paneling that the uh, screws screw into. This AC filter, it's very common on all of these Winnebago's. These holes, there's only four holes that hold the filter on. That housing and of course you have to take that filter off periodically and it gets cleaned off and then eventually these holes just get stripped out so what I'm gonna do is just uh, add a backer behind right here so I'll get that started and hammer it in this will give that'll go back into the roof like that and now we have something substantial to actually run some screws into uh, and we'll be doing a very similar thing up front when we get there so this is the things that the paper cuts where each thing by itself doesn't take too long but all these add little things that you have to do just to make sure the roof is going to work right start adding up that I didn't really plan on doing. So you can see that thing's buried in there now. Now when I put a screw in I can go straight into that aluminum. Uh, the foam and the pressure will keep that from spinning. Uh, I just have to do that three more times and then I can put this AC together. I, 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 in order to do this, the entire plenum has to be off, so there's no reason for me to put the AC together until I do this. So once I put these on, then I can put the AC together. And this won't be dangling in the way anymore. Alright, so all those are buried in there now. And of course these are just uh, supports that Winnebago puts in, so when we tighten up those bolts, it doesn't crush the foam. Because, of course it would just crush the foam. You can see they even put a aluminum tube right there to keep the duct from collapsing. Alright, so I got a couple of started there so it can at least hold up. I'll just get this uh, self-tapping screw. You can use a drill bit, but I'm an RV tech, so I use what I have on here. There we go, I drilled a hole. I mean, this screw would work, but the head of it is a little bit too small, and I'll just break that plastic, especially since it's so worn out. Put a little bit bigger screw in there. First time. All right, now it's going to be nice and secured. I got one more to put in there, and then I can start putting this roof back together. Guess you got to have AC when you're putting this back together, right? Okay, so now... I Got everything done on the inside. So skylight's back up in there. AC's back up. That fan, of course, is running. TV antenna's back up. And lastly, that fan's going. 
Last thing I have to do is finish the wiring on this. Ran some wires. Yeah, route those wires, James. You know, this way you're not the cameraman. <laughs> Lance, it got me in portrait here. All right, so this goes to the closet light, which is full-time power. That's the closet right there. So we picked up ground from the closet light and power from the closet light. And now we have, with this awesome router out uh, channel, we have power for a vent. Woo! Closet light. So right here is a closet light switch. So it should have power full time on one side of it. And then this is the ground that will go to the ground to the light over here. I'm going to hope that everything I did was right as a guesswork. So let me get these hooked up and go from there. Hopefully, hit the on button right there and it turns on. And then we'll make sure I shut the door doesn't turn off. Same with that one. Okay, light still works. Put this together. All right, so I'm just using these uh, truss screws again. These are my favorite screws, wood screws, one inch length. You got that washer head on it, so it spreads out the tension. I'm just putting everything back together. We're putting the new Max fans on. I like these, these incorporate that roof cover, the roof vent cover, so you don't have to worry about installing two things, just the one thing. And again, definitely replace all your roof components when you're doing a new roof, except for obviously your TV antenna or your roof AC. Or your skylight unless it's broken. I'm just gonna get all this done and then we'll uh, hopefully check back in in a minute. I'm sure it's getting boring to hear but uh, it's sure difficult to find parts right now so that tubing, that, that roof tubing that's in the gun, that's the last tube I have currently. I don't know if you can see the skylight is halfway sealed. I've sealed everything else that's vital to get sealed. I'm just gonna be putting the rear cap on and then probably do those brackets at the front that I was talking about. Doing the front cap is going to be a two-man job, so I'll have to wait for a little bit of help. All right, so when I put those uh, pieces of metal in there, it's because what some people end up doing is they use uh, drywall anchors. And drywall anchors, they split at the... Let me see. They, they kind of like split out. So the wall has to be at least like a, a three eighths of an inch thick for it to actually grab onto anything. So drywall anchors won't do anything. Uh, I could have put like a nut and a bolt, but that's a lot of extra work. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing right here. I'm gonna make some uh, aluminum brackets that won't look too dissimilar to this. They will, uh, let's see, there's the screw holes. Oh, so there are the screw holes where this monstrosity was being screwed to. I need to go from there to there at least, so it looks like three inches will do it and clear it. It's got to be three inches deep and probably at least an inch and a half tall. So let me just go make one, two, three, four, five, five. We'll do six just in case. Now I'm not delusional. I am delusional, but I'm not delusional in the sense that I think this is the best repair. This is just a good enough repair, especially compared to what was there before. We could spend two, three, four months re rebuilding the front cap a better way, but who has that kind of time in their life? This will work. So it's all our secret. That's how I cut that. Don't tell anybody. All right, I got six of those cut. Don't ask me how. Next thing I need to do is drill some holes in this. I only won't need two of them. You don't have to be pristine or perfect, which is good because I don't do pristine or perfect. So let me just make a mark where I want these to be. So right about there, I'll drill those through all of them at the same time, and then we'll do one last thing. Again, this is number one reason why I'm not a machinist or an engineer. That I'm very liberal with measurements and tolerances. They just don't excite me that much. The last thing I need to do is take this over to the brake and bend this to a 90 degree. 
and we'll have nine cool little or six cool little brackets. So that's gonna be about an inch and a half back. Actually, I don't remember what my measurement is. So. All right, I agree. This might be overkill as far as a break goes, but when you got it, hammer what everything looks like a nail. Is that how that goes? There's my bracket. Let's make five more of these. All right, there we go. We got all one, two, three, four. I guess it is six. We got six of them. Make our way back. Roof looks pretty good from here, though, doesn't it? Well, there will be a few ways of doing this the right way. So what I'm looking to do is slide this guy right here into that foam and then drill it into this steel right there. Now, when we drill up from below, we'll go into this aluminum and that'll be behind that foam and part of the sandwich and spread out the, the load quite a bit. Now you could heat this up so it uh, cuts through the foam a little bit better. You can do it however you want, but I'm just gonna try a hammer first. All right, so there you are, one installed. I'll get five more installed right there. So now when the screw gets ran in from below, it'll have something, basically a nailing surface is what it'll have. It might have the unattended effect of actually Securing the front of the cap a little bit, but that's not really its job uh, The front cap's gonna do a good job of doing that I didn't say you couldn't use fire. I said it's definitely a possibility I'm gonna heat that up Pretty well We'll just push that through There you go, a lot better there so Chad's just in there running the screws down on the front cap. Got the Sikaflex oozing out. We're looking good. So this thing's just about ready done to be done. And then we'll clean it up and take a look at it. That's what the new roof is looking like so far. How's it looking in there, Chad? Oh, the top looks good. That's good. All right, so I got all that put back together. So now we can see with the front cap on, those aluminum brackets I put on, I put, put a mark on the ceiling so I can see where they're gonna be underneath. And I'm hoping that those are the holes. So I think they should be more than long enough. But you never know. I don't take a lot of time sometimes. Hopefully, the screw should be able to go up into there and then grab this metal plate. That'll at least be a nice surface for it to grab onto. All right, it's a bit awkward here. Hold that up right there so you can see. Can you see? Uh, the bracket's right there. Just the screw hopefully going up into it. And it's a little bit. All right, well, so far so good. Those screws are grabbing on. Uh, I gotta drill out the next one here. You can see my mark, so I'll drill a hole right about there and then hopefully screw up into it. All right, I have to use some long extensions so I get a good angle on this. And I'm using some fairly long screws here. Call those two and a half. There's a lot of foam to go through. And I did check, and I mean, I'll check the roof again to make sure I didn't go through. So there's the plate I'm heading now. All right, so just have a few more to do and then I can secure this underneath here to something back there. I'm hoping there's something back there to screw to. All right, so I think we got it all set. I just have to connect the wires there. But it's back in there now, so pull on that. I wouldn't say you should be able to hang on it, but I think you could hang on it now pretty well. And I know that one's going into the frame of the wall there. I couldn't do that on this side because, you know, it's supposed to be a cabinet right here. Hence all the 
holes in the wall. All right, so our last little step on this roof, since everything's, well, it's not the last step, because I still have to do a cap to seal it once I get some more. Enough of that complaining. Is to uh, actually do the important part that holds this roof down. So I have to inject the uh, Proflex right here. Proflex GeoCell clear stuff right into here so that uh, this radius doesn't pop out all the way down. Then we'll try our best to make it look okay. Also, to cap off this radius right there so that when I put the roof seal on top, it'll uh, go over the top of that seal. So, like a shingle. So, we're doing that. We're literally injecting it down in there, squeezing it through, separating the pylon from the radius or the uh, molding. And once you pass through, it'll ooze up so it gets pretty well uh, down in there and hooks onto everything it can. Then we'll come back after the fact and tool it to make it look good. Alright, so here it is. This is the seal, sealant that you're supposed to be inspecting at least uh, once a year. But doing it more often is not a bad idea. So I just tooled that so it's looking decent enough. But uh, yeah. This is what we need to be looking at. This is what's gluing the, the roof down to the, uh, that, that radius down, all the way down. So just do that side, do the other side, and this roof will be almost done. All right, I did luckily find some sealant. All right, got some coming, or right, I got some. So I read a couple beads of this. This is a self-leveling 311 new flex sealant. This is not Dicor. Do not use Dicor on a Winnebago roof. So this is the last little bit to do. I just finished up the skylight in the rear. So it's kind of hard to see, but this is actually silicone. It levels itself out. Normal silicone will leave gaps. This will not. All right, so you can see I put the first bead down underneath and then I'll do a lap beat over the top to just do a, a backup basically some of this might leak over if it flows out okay i can trim that later once it's all hardened but even this stuff this will take a couple days in the sun before it's uh hard like this stuff's been here for a couple days and uh it's skinned over but you can see it's very soft still underneath so it takes a while for this to cure all right, guys, so not the prettiest, but it's back up again. And should be a lot better than it was. We don't need these supporting it. And this job is done. I just need to go ahead and get it cleaned. All right, let's go up there. All right, I sealed this a few days ago, so the sealant should be... A little bit, uh, oh yeah, it's nice and firm. Firm, firm, firm. I don't like to send these down the road until the sealant's cured at least for a couple days. All right, so here's the big reveal, guys. Sure looks a heck of a lot better than it did. This skylight's not cracked anymore. Of course, we upgraded all the uh, max fans, all three of them. So the covers, there's no covers there anymore. So it has a low profile when it's down. And then when you crank this up, this is the vent lid. It actually uh, is a, a cover too. So you can open these up in, in the rain. Overall, I do know this area right here has a little bit of a dip down to it. Or a, I don't know if I would call it a dip down, but it's up to the cap. But that's just because we had a lot of structure with that ceiling that got wet. And then this is just one of those bow supports that I always point out. That's pretty common, even on new ones. Ceiling's looking really good, oozing out. Still a little bit tacky, so I'm glad they're gonna be back in a car. They'll be here in a couple days to pick it up. Now I don't always wash things in for service but it's a good chance to do a leak test anyways on the roof. So we'll get this thing dusted off. Now I want to do a 
crazy perfect detail on it, but it's gotten dusty here. Might as well rinse it off anyways. What I want you to do is go straight to Andrew's channel and let him know that you just watched a hack uh, try to detail an RV. Maybe I can schedule to have Andrew come take a, give me some uh, ins instructions on how to actually detail properly. But now I'm back inside and I got this thing plugged in. I'm going to do one final check and make sure uh, no more water. All right, so it's a pretty good leak test, I guess you could say. Of course, I was already there. Don't blame me on that one. Let me see if water coming in right there. Focus. I don't see. Feel any water there. Looking good there. Should we focus on something? Of course, the last one's going to be the skylight. And. Feels pretty good to me. I think. Now, of course, the play, only place I'm really concerned at this point is going to be at this gap right there, or where the uh, side wall meets the uh, the bunk area, over there and over there. Mostly because there was obviously a lot of damage over here, but it looks pretty dry, guys. Nice. So I did come back and I. Did reseal that with silicone after I cleaned everything up. Same with that right here. Now this is, this uh, bead is always what actually breaks over time and then water just gets ran down the sidewall straight into this gutter right there. So this is something you really need to check almost monthly. All right guys, so there it was, a cautionary tale about checking out a roof or having a, uh, an RV inspected before you buy it. Uh, an inspector really should have caught that, so I don't think these owners knew what they were getting into. And I, de I really just felt bad for them. So this was a, a more difficult roof job than I had planned on it being. Between the ceiling being loose, uh, the roof to sidewall screws all being stripped and missing. This isn't quite as uh, laser perfect roof as it was from the factory because those sidewalls got loose. and cause a little bit of deforming to the box itself but that's a nice looking roof again no seams should give them a lot of protection and they should just have to check it out every year make sure everything's doing okay I'll run by a few things with them when they uh, when they come by other than that 2003-2004 Itasca Sundancer and we got a new roof on it Thanks a lot, guys. All right, well, I think we're going to be heading out now. There she goes. Back to Tucson. Doesn't look too bad. Of course, I can't see it. The roof job. Hopefully, they got another 10 years of life and to RV in with that. It's got Chad seal of approval. So it took me a while, but I found it. I couldn't find this before. So those will be covered. Don't worry about that. Pay no attention to that. You should probably go on the roof though and take a look at it. Clean faster. Huh? What? Clean faster? I didn't say that.
your bitch, James? Uh, sometimes. Oh, only sometimes.